Hey all, Stephen Prospali here, and today we are going to be tunneling TCP over HTTP. More specifically, ping, so ICMP echo requests and echo replies. The reasons why you would want to do something like this is because you may be connected to a network that is behind a firewall or a web filter or some other security device that is preventing access to a website that you still want to get to. Another scenario would be you are connected to a Wi-Fi access point that whatever web page you try to load, it redirects you to a sign-in page or a sign-up page that you don't have or you don't want to do. In either scenario, most environments will still allow ping for troubleshooting to traverse the network. And we are going to take advantage of that in this use case. So what will be required first is that you have a host on the internet that accepts ping. So this could be a, a host in your home network, or you could get a vhost somewhere, a, a free shell account that will accept ping and that you've got permissions to install software on it. From there, for this example, we're going to use a piece of software called ptunnel. So on this host that is out on the internet, you would install ptunnel and run it as a server. From there, on the client, you would also install the same ptunnel software. And what will happen is you will establish an ICMP tunnel from the client to that ptunnel server out on the internet. From there, you are going to redirect web traffic through that tunnel. So the security device in the middle is only seeing ICMP traffic. Once the web request gets to your ptunnel server out on the internet, it will decapsulate that traffic and make a normal web request to the destination website, which will respond normally. Your ptunnel server will re-encapsulate pa those packets in ICMP and send them back through that firewall or whatever that security device is to the client and display the web page. So let's just demonstrate what this looks like. So this device here is going to represent the ptunnel server. This is the host that is outside of the firewall. I'm doing this locally, so I have a firewall in my network, uh, and this device represented by the dot 55 subnet is on the outside of the firewall. From there, again, we run the ptunnel software. You can run it on its own and it works just fine. In this use case, I've specified the verbosity level to be at level four for debugging. And you can also specify a password with dash X. So if you don't want somebody to find and abuse your ptunnel server, you can specify a password. From there, we move over to the client device. So this is the device that you're on that you can't get to certain web pages from. This device is behind the firewall and it's represented by the .45 subnet. So from behind the firewall, again, we run the exact same ptunnel software except the flags are a little bit different. So in this case, on the client side, we are gonna specify the ptunnel proxy with this dash p command, and then we follow that by the publicly reachable IP address or host name of that ptunnel proxy server that we've set up. The dash lp8080 starts up a local proxy on this client device so that when this device sees traffic go to itself on port 8080, it knows to send that traffic over the ICMP tunnel. From there, we need to specify a destination address with this particular software of where do we want to eventually get to. This is how we specify the website that we're trying to get to that we're having problems with. And so in this case, I'm specifying this website with a destination port of 80, it accepts that traffic. And so 
we start this up and then we will navigate to the web page. I am going to start this in a private browsing tab so that we don't load any local cache. So again, we need to just route this through local host on port 8080. That is where the local proxy is running to go out and get this traffic. And you can see that the page has already loaded. If we go over to our server, we can see that the request came in from the NAT IP of the firewall, so the outside IP of the firewall, and then the proxy server went out and made a request to the target website. What else is interesting is this is the firewall that is sitting between the client and the P tunnel server. So if we take a look at the logs from 41 minutes after the hour, which is when this took place, we can see that my client device on the inside of the firewall, so that 45.128 was talking to the 55.146, so the P tunnel server, just mostly on ping. However, what we see right here, one of the first packets, this particular firewall has identified this as ping dash tunnel. So this particular firewall could have detected this. So with positive access control, so if we said ping is allowed, but not ping tunnel, then this traffic would have been denied. But most environments still don't have the capabilities to do that. So for more information and to slow this down, you can uh, check out the associated blog post that has this all in more words, as well as some step-by-steps and some external links. So thanks and hope this helps.